How's that for a fancy intro? Cine photography game level up. Anyhow, what is going on? It's Saturday. Another day out, back on the big sit, stick, rather. Big stick Saturdays. Say it three times real fast. Anyhow, we're gonna take this girl out for a run today. It's uh, some exciting news. We've been chasing some funky boom controls on this thing for, shoot, over a year now. And finally, we got it to uh, one of our local service centers, the guys at Gestaldo Concrete. And they were able to, to tame the stallion, the boom that could not be tamed. It was not in the remote, it was not in the receiver. There was some funky stuff going on in the, um, the computer systems. I don't know all the details, but they got it fixed up. And the cool thing, they installed buttons on the remote for teaching, so you no longer need that uh, the goofy battery with the plus minus buttons that usually only lasts about 15 minutes and you get halfway through tuning the boom and the battery dies on you. Now it's built right into the remote, which is gonna be super handy. So I'm gonna tune this thing today, because from what I understand from Corey who's been running it, um, it's still a little bit on the slow side, so we're gonna get that all, all fixed up. We've got a couple other things here while we're at the shop. Kind of a busy Saturday. This one's going out. The other big one, the 56, is going out. There she is. The 39, way over there yonder. It's going out, plug into a placing boom today. This thing showed up. Schwing trailer pump. Courtesy of our friends at, uh, oh, can I pull this down? Normac concrete pumping. We're gonna use this thing for a few months here and possibly perhaps longer. But uh, yeah, we had a special job coming for it for a trailer pump. So this thing should, should get the job done. Solid, solid unit for sure. You know the beauty of this? It's so simple. Simple uh, lever with cables for throttle control, little volume knob, uh, pump on off, glow plugs, old school stuff. No after treatment garbage to deal with, so I'm really excited about that. But here's something that's really cool. What I'm most excited about is something came in the mail from my friend uh, Caleb. He's got a YouTube channel, Concrete Pumping Service. Fairly new channel. He's got a nice little TK60 Putzmeister, does some really cool stuff. Some shotcrete, some long line jobs. You know, he sent me some swag. I have not opened this yet. This is 100% organic what I'm doing here this is the first time this is a uh, true unboxing what do we got what did Caleb send us Caleb sent us oh buddy that's actually a nice hat too it's not one of them cheap crappy hats that you never actually wear this is great you got a t-shirt t-shirt as well and for them cold Canadian winners, oh, another t-shirt. And for them cold Canadian winners, a hoodie. Man, that is awesome. Thank you, Caleb, that's wicked. Uh, check out his channel, Concrete Pumping Service. Like I said, he's got some really good videos. Um, I will say personally, the line pumping channels, like his stuff, um, Jeff from Muddy Feet, his line pumping. Uh, that's some of my, my favorite stuff to watch to me. That's like, pumping in its purest most basic form and that's that's actually what interests me arguably even more so than than this stuff so anyhow check out caleb's channel there we're gonna get this girl fired up and hit the road i've been yibber yabbering way too much already here so here we are Corey's infamous dashboard of doom could you put more crap on the dashboard Corey? wow well at least he's got one Often more of everything, so that's that's good, I guess. Anyhow, we'll tidy this up before we hit the road. So before we roll out here, I do my usual test. We're gonna throw this thing in PTO and just test the pump functions. 
Uh, pro tip of the day, and this is something I was taught from a very early stage in my career. Transmission, high range, ninth gear. And instead of just flicking it into PTO and then releasing the clutch, what I was taught to do is release the clutch pedal just enough that you hear the engine load up. Go there, push it back down. Now switch it into pump. What I was told this does is it uh, prevents the shift fork from not fully engaging and uh, potentially damaging it. Have you ever had those odd times when you let the clutch out and you haven't done this? And you get that grinding noise from the PTO from the Stiebel box? Um, this will prevent that. So the exact details and mechanical explanation, maybe somebody in the comments section can, uh, can explain it a little better than I am here. But yeah, anytime you're gonna go into PTO, let's see this one more time. High range, clutch in, ninth gear, let the clutch out a little bit, load it up, then switch it into pump mode. Now release it, easy. And I'm calling it ninth gear, it's actually seventh gear on this transmission. I forget that this isn't a 10 speed. This is a, uh, an 18, so. All right. So let's go and test out our remote now. God damn, this thing is dirty. We're gonna start calling Corey, Dirty Corey. For several reasons, but today that reason would be the remote. So what we're gonna do here, camera and mouth time, I'm gonna hold down the plus minus buttons while doing my usual release, e-stop, power up, boot up of the remote control. What you're gonna notice is the green light is gonna flash rapidly. The regular speed is, well, yay fast. Now we'll redo this while holding the buttons down. Camera and mouth time. So the rapid flash means it's in teach mode. I have a full video, maybe I'll link the, uh, the I'll put a link to it down below, where I go through the tuning process of this. So I don't know that I'll have time to get into it too much today because it's gonna be a, a decent sized pour. Um, but anyhow, that's how you boot it up. Normally, like I said, you would need the battery with the, uh, the two buttons to teach like this. Well, now they're built right in the remote. Thank you, Gestalbo Concrete Service Department. Amazing. Man, oh man, I tell you, if I could get even just one day in this thing without some sort of a, a check engine light, today it's an ABS light, shutdown light, you name it. What's the light of the day? Every day it's something. drive this thing when you make a right hand turn because the back end swings out so far because of the rear steer you basically got to drive it like an a-hole so you go right from the center lane and then we turn and the reason why we do that Otherwise, if you don't take up that, that left side lane partially, a car will try and scooch by you and you'll wipe them out. So, on a side note, good old Mac leaf string suspension and uh, super full coffee. Doesn't jive too well. We got a spill. Best time to drink coffee in this rig? Oh, you're climbing a hill. Alright, so here I am, 6 a.m. on site. I guess there was a bit of a boo-boo and concrete's actually not till 8 and I'm not supposed to be here till 7. So we'll just chill out and enjoy a beautiful summer morning for an hour or so here. Um, don't forget, don't forget, don't forget the contest. Best comment for the month of July wins the Schwing 51SX diecast scale model concrete pump. So best positive educational 
conversation starting, whatever, comment, even humorous. Humorous is good, too. Uh, so we've got about two weeks left to get those in, and then uh, Dan and I are going to go through them, and we'll, we'll deliberate, and we'll make a video out of it. And, um, yeah, and we'll choose who's going who's gonna to win the model. So looking forward to giving that one away. Oh, well, you know I'll be grabbing a bucket of that front of the S2. Oh, that's the good stuff. Even better, there's sand over there. Sandy road base. Love it. All right, after snaking my way up two separate stair cores and five minutes later, I found the deck. It's actually not that big. Got my range finder here, the best hundred bucks I ever spent. From here to the edge, to the cattle guard there, guardrail, whatever you're gonna call it. 33 meters so we should have lots of reach here because I bet you it's not more than about 15 meters down to the pump for a total of 48 and I've got 58 vertical 54 horizontal so let's just say by the time I come up and over depending on how the boom lines up with the guardrail let's say I've got 52 total so we had 33 there and down to the pump, I've got 18, if you can see that. Might be tough to see. So 18 and 33 equals 51. I'm not just a dumb pump operator. I'm average smart for a pump operator. So, yeah, okay. So we should be, we're bang on for each. It'll just be a whip hose. Pretty easy setup. This kind of sucks that I gotta walk all the way around to get down to the pump. I mean, that's pretty pretty standard fare for these types of jobs. So it's gonna be really tough to coordinate the eating of my uh, my brown bag lunch I brought. But anyhow, we'll go down, we'll get set up. But yeah, this is nice, nice straightforward. Not a lot of shade. It's gonna be hot as, uh, hot as you know what up here. So hopefully we get good service and get it down quick. This is why I'm glad I got to site early. Usually we only get an hour set up for these pumps. If it's a job that I've been to before, I know the layout, know what I'm doing, that's fine. But when it's a first time like it is here, you know, I need 15, 20 minutes just to get my bearings. And I don't want to just set up based on what somebody else told me. I like to come up and have a look. Otherwise you set the pump up, boom out, and you end up being two hoses short when you could have reached it if you just checked it out beforehand. So that's, that's what I always do whenever possible. So... Front outriggers come out 14 and a half feet from the tire. Rear outriggers come out 14 feet from the tire. So I'm gonna shuffle my back end over here. But first I'm just gonna get my tape measure. I'll measure this out and I'll throw some markings down. That's what I always do, so. I'm actually not too far off here on the back. Just gotta come over to the rope. Come over about a foot. In the front one, I got to slew it out past this box. On this machine, the front outrigger sits ab about two feet in front of the front bumper. So I'm going to pull myself up a few feet here to get around that box more easily. And just hand bomb this stuff out of the way. All right, we're all lined up with our marks. Let's fire some outriggers out and see how we did here. to rethink this slightly because my outrigger gets into this box here
too bad. I'll just pull this pad back now that I found some gloves. We'll center it up a little bit better. Which is vicious even through these winter gloves. So now you can see I'm spanning across all those 4x6 timbers with these nice uh, composite pads here. Spread that load through the composite pads rather than just relying on the plywood top layer. Let's see how we line up on the back here. I think we're going to be pretty close. The pad's probably going to have to come up this way a little bit and maybe in a touch. Let's see. as I guess. I think there's a better way to move this. Much better way to move this. A much better way. The washout bar is your friend. Good old leverage. Amazingly enough, a bit of an anomaly with this pump. I think we're going to get a full rig today. So I'll swing these out all the way on the non-working side. And I'll still throw down these, these 36 by 36 pads and my 24 by 24 squares on top of those. We still need to uh, respect the non-working side of the pump. So. This is no coincidence. I'm pretty sure Corey's been in here with this pump before. So let's just give the uh, old pooper the good morning stir. Plug your nose. Ever gone to move one of those? And are, were you inside? Okay. Were you inside? No. Oh, good. <laughs> no, 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 no. I was coming to help. Oh yeah, yeah. <laughs> I was just gonna go on about ever trying to move one of those with somebody inside of it. <laughs> double check on these before you put them out that somebody hasn't left the locking plate in there that's for the short rigging which we're not going to do today but if somebody forgets to put this back here you're going to be short one outrigger stage and it will be catastrophic so always double check yellow to yellow not yellow to white no i've got my my two composites on the other side it's all good man i'm, I'm pretty much dialed in there so.
right, so we'll start jacking the low side of the pump first here. I just bring that up and I want to get a little bit of uh, weight off those tires and I'll go on the truck and I'll dump the airbags too so I don't have the the air suspension trying to lift the truck up as I'm stretched out and the leverage from the boom also trying to lift it up all that's going to do is cause the outriggers on this side to to lift up a little bit become unsettled and it just results in boom bounce nothing dangerous just doesn't make it as uh, smooth for the guy on the end of the hose so. so now we'll crank these ones up pretty good whenever I set up on ground like this this is seemingly really hard ground but if it were to be backfilled underneath and it was just a hardened compact layer on top I check for fault lines you'll get fault lines around your dunnage if you start seeing fault lines around your dunnage uh, you should probably rethink your setup location or rethink your amount of dunnage at least so but this uh, this spot here appears to be quite stable but we'll still check in on that I just want to make sure to suck all your sections in before you try and lift this boom out of the cradle. Otherwise, if you don't, you lift up and that second has sag in it and it drags on the uh, on the base pad there. You can start wrecking stuff pretty quick. So, so always, always, always do that before pulling the boom out of the cradle. Now, it's that time. Will it be a good day or will it be a bad day? Boom off the driver's side. It's a good day boom not off the driver's side well you know how it goes let's see what do we got oh really no yeah all right well that's the kind of day it's gonna be but it can only get better that's the other way of looking at it, it can only get better uh, these big pumps are so slow to spin around and unfold uh, how it was explained to me by an engineer was that when the boom is at maximum reach with full hydraulic speed as fast as the, as the cylinders can move the boom it cannot exceed something more than like i think it was five feet per second of drop don't quote me on that exact number but just to give you an idea let's say it was five feet per second so the longer out the boom is the slower that main section has to be tuned to keep it within that five feet per second Hence why a 50, 60, 65 meter boom is way slower to unfold and fold up than something like a little 28 meter. So I wish someday what they would have is like a proximity switch that would tell the pump how far from center the boom is stretched out and it would have faster hydraulic capabilities so that when we're in close like this and we're unfolding, you can unfold the pump super fast and then it would slow those things down as the boom is stretched out and keep it within that five feet per second. That would be really cool, but I don't know if that would also entail a whole bunch of uh, fancy valving with the hydraulics and whatnot. But it sure would be helpful for those times when you got to uh, break down mid-pour and reset up with these big pumps. That's just my two cents on the situation. So you can see how painfully slow some of these sections are, especially in uh, turtle speed. So this is full stick, see how slow that is? So all I do is go to my plus sign while holding that full open, and you give it one, two, three bumps, and that speeds it up a good bit. And then when I come back in, we'll go one, two, three bumps, and that speeds it up a bit. But you'll see it's all kind of done by eye and by watching the hand valves too. That's why I did a video the other day on the new uh, the Aircom remote. It actually has numerical values for tuning, so you've got reference points rather than just a, a visual, which is a much better way of doing it in my opinion. This works because I'm used to it. It'll just take some time to get it just right. But it makes it so much easier having the buttons right on the remote and not having to deal with that silly teach battery. 
All right, so five minutes later, I think I've got this thing tuned reasonably. You never really know until you got a guy on the end of the hose and you're dealing with the, uh, the bounce and pulsations of the pumping action. But uh, I think we're in the ballpark here right now. So super quick and easy. Uh, all you gotta do, to remember to do is, to save your settings, all you gotta do is hit e-stop. Now they're saved. If you don't wanna save them, don't hit the e-stop. Just pull your battery out and the remote will die and it won't save anything, so. Which is, uh, brings me to another point. If you're gonna be tuning this, make sure you got a fully charged battery because if it dies mid-tune, you're gonna lose all your hard work, so. I'll bring this down, throw a reducer on, throw my four inch hose on. Crappy thing, got a brand new four inch hose. Luckily it's nicely beveled. A lot of the hoses now with the hardened ends, they have a sharp edge. That's the way they come new, which sucks. But our reducer is quite worn and our backup is not much better. Or I should say the backup is quite worn and the primary is not much better. So we're gonna have a little bit of a, uh, a lip between the outlet end and uh, that new hose. But I think this is a small rock mix today, so I'm not too worried about it, but I'll, I'll keep an eye on that, especially when I'm priming out. It could be a, a prime point for plugging. Tip of the day, don't be a dickhead. Use safety pins. Because who wants to be a dickhead, right? Safety straps, safety pins. I usually run the strap through this loop, but the way this was geared up on this pump, it's not really conducive to it. AKA the straps are a little bit crusty to reconfigure right now. And always strap to the boom. I've seen the safety strap down to the tip elbow before, which is no good. If you ever had an issue with this clamp here, what's holding it to the boom? Nothing. Absolutely don't, don't do that. So anyhow, we're all good. We won't be uh, we won't be a big, big jerk today. We got our safety pins in, so. Because we love our placers, right? Yes, we do. Slump up this bentonite that was on the truck. It's not a bad idea, actually, to leave a scoop of bentonite with a little bit of water on the pump, and then when you go to use it on your next job, it's a lot quicker to mix. Just give her a little bit of uh, little bit of action with the water, because the longer this stuff sits, the thicker it'll get, and we don't want it to be that thick. So I'll load this bucket up with water, let it sit for a little bit longer, and we should have... Uh, a near perfect concoction by the time Ready Mix gets here. Like that, we're good, ready for a Z prime. Like I said, when I'm gonna stretch right out to start the pour, I like to prime in the Z. Then I have almost all my sections full except for the tip section. Instead of priming out in an A, stretching out and having half a boom that's gonna be full of air. Compress, compress, compress. If there was a plug in the hose or something, boof. So we do it this way, to minimize uh, any risks of an air pocket when we first start the pour. That being said, if you're new to pumping, A-frame is your highest success rate by far. So I would, uh, I would just keep it simple, get the concrete through, cycle it at a rapid pace if you want to work that arrow to the boom, whatever else you got to do. But definitely there's a little bit more to priming through in a Z. We use the bent night, so pretty much foolproofs it. Um, but yeah, if you're new to pumping, this might be uh, day three, not day two kind of stuff. So. Out. Every time. Yeah, I know I said I was gonna use the 36 by 36 square black pads underneath these top pads, but the uh, the eager young fella helping me out grabbed the yellows. And you know what? Honestly, the yellows are bigger and better, and bigger and better is always better when it comes to dunnage, so so be it. Look what just arrived. It's showtime. Actually, I can't say that. That's 
Jeff from Muddy Feet saying. It's go time. Yeah, yeah, it's go time. That's what it is. Here we go. All right, here we go. I'm heading up top for who knows how long. If we don't get any breaks in service, probably eight hours. So, what do you take when you go up on a suspended deck for an indefinite amount of time? One extra GoPro battery, two delicious chocolate chip, chocolate dip granola bars, one large bottle of water, one extra battery. Still charging, it's been on there for an hour. Dang it, oh well, that's all I got. And I'll put my my third stringer, I'll put the third stringer on charge, so he's got something in the charger ready to rock. I think that'll get me for the day here. See ya uh, in about eight hours, Mr. Lunch, wherever you are in the bottom there, so. And this guy, that too, because you know what's gonna happen if I don't take it up. Be inevitable. You're ready to go. I'll prime this out there and bring it back. I just want to splash this truck. It's actually not small rock today. We're doing regular rock, which is fine. And my usual stroke every five to seven seconds. Come on, baby. Should be coming into those elbows there between the sections uh, three and four pretty soon. Pretty soon. Sometimes it's so smooth you can't even hear it. Today might be one of those. One of those days, I got a lot of white noise behind me here too. And we're always checking for air at the end of the hose with our hand and we've got air. Which means the concrete is moving. So it's not an old sponge that's been left in the boom. Now it's into those elbows. That took way longer than I thought. I don't get out on this pump enough. So probably another three strokes and we should be coming down the final, uh, final run here. Beautiful. Take a little more here, get out of the rocky stuff. <laughs> That's pretty good. They don't want a big mess here. I'm happy with it. All right, let's go for a walk. We're going up top. All right, here we go, rock and roll. Get this girl up onto the deck. Stretch her out. What am I gonna do? I'm not gonna stretch it flat out. I'm gonna keep a little bit of a uh, slope in that fourth section, just to get the first bit of concrete through. Always careful and tedious, just when you're pumping that first bit of mud through the boom. That's one of your most likely times to catch an air pocket if you're uh, if you slip up even for a second. So I don't care how much of a rush they are in on, uh, they're in on the site. I'm not. Uh, that's something I, I don't compromise on. So and trust me, I learned that the hard way a few years ago. So this will work out pretty well here. I'm gonna. Uh, Get in a position as such that I can do this whole pour, or at least the first half, just using my fourth and fifth section. It's just a lot smoother and easier. I'll keep this main section about three feet off the guardrail. That way when the boom loads up, starts bouncing around, I've got some, uh, a little bit of a buffer. Same with uh, over the rebar zones. I'll keep this about three feet over the zones. Better safe than sorry, obviously. Bang on for reach today. This is good. Oh, 
I'll just unfold it and pump a little bit through and then you can have at her. Just the first bit's a little rocky and I'll let you know when you can approach the hose. Nice and slow here. See the air coming out. A little bit segregated. Good stuff should be coming soon. And we're good. All right. This hose guy likes it high, which is perfect. All the best hose guys like to hang it high and push it. A guy like this, if I were to slew the boom to the right right now, he'd go right onto his face and on the slab. Even though it looks like he's working hard, that's exactly how he likes to do it. So, and that works for me. The odd time when I run the hose, I'm the same way. I'd rather push it. 10 foot radius. Hang the hose in the center, I'll push it in a 10 foot radius. Kit on the hose is great. I love it. My favorite kind of hose guy. Cool, calm, hang the hose. He'll work it from there. Not a huggy bear. I wish they were all like this. Maybe it will be a good day. All right, so we're only about 50 meters in of 220-ish, I think. Pouring for about, just about an hour. And the big boom monotony has already set in. Run the hose back and forth, back and forth for about the next five hours here. I could pump faster, but there's not much point. The truck's down below, he's got to back in from way around the corner. If I speed this thing up, all that's going to happen is I'm going to run the one truck out, and the second truck, the next one, won't have backed on and had time to slump up. This speed we're working at right now, it's perfect. By the time that second truck backs on, the first truck is down to about three cubic meters. Gives the second guy time to slump up, check his slump, get the chute loaded and ready. And we end up with a uh, seamless transition, which is good. And the placers keep going, they keep, uh, they keep in their groove, maintain their groove. I maintain my groove. Reminds me of a little story of the, uh, the tortoise and the hare, something like that. Plus, I don't want to needlessly beat the crap out of the boom pipe and uh, consume any more fuel than I have to, so. It's all about the bottom line for this guy. But anyhow, just my, uh, my deep pumper's thoughts as we pour here. And if you're curious as to why I'm so concerned about the bottom line, I think it's obvious by now. I want that new Putzmeister 28Z. And we gotta turn some greenbacks to make that happen. Once again, probably never happened. Money doesn't grow on trees. 
Unless we got a really, really sweet deal. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge, Putzmeister. Wink, wink, nudge, nudge. Anyhow, yeah, I would love to have that machine. I would be so happy out running that every day versus, uh, versus doing this. Fortunately, I only do this like one, maybe two days a week. So it's nice every once in a while, I'll give some variety to things, but I would be happier than a, than a pig and poop with that little 28 meter running around, banging out tight setups and little residential jobs, tricky commercial jobs, stuff like that. That is my element. We finally got a break in the action, which means I am gonna run down to the pump and put lunch on. Catch it up. Load some fuel on this thing. It burns about one liter for every cubic meter pump. That holds 300 liters. And I'm gonna do, they're saying 250-ish cubic meters today. Then I got my driving time, my travel, burn fuel and travel getting here and there. So I'll load this up now. Just a little splash, a little splash and dash. Like a like a pit stop. Right, quick little walk around before I head back up check on our dunnage all is good I had this open because I was tuning the boom which is done it's pretty sweet now we'll talk more about that later all is good the outriggers on the other side are nice and planted on the ground no surprises I spotted a ride on trial. There she is. Incoming. Those are so nice for stuff like this where it's fairly wide open and there aren't a bunch of pipes and whatnot sticking out of this slab. Definitely the way to go. Cuts down on a lot of labor. Turns out a nicer, flatter slab, less less humps and bumps. Ah, technology. opinion elevated decks like this are where the RZ boom configuration really shines you can basically work everything with that fourth and fifth section and just just doing a lot of this it's nice and smooth it's great for staying underneath of the crane in my opinion it's better than a ZR which would Z knuckle back here and I'd, ha I'd have to run this at a uh, higher overall height which isn't as friendly for getting under the crane and I just find this is so operator friendly I can do this whole slab almost just using the last two sections and then slewing left and right on my main. And it's very, very smooth on this position too. I don't know. Let me know what you guys think. I haven't actually put a lot of time in or any time in on a ZR or even like an overhead rolling fold like the uh, like the Schwings or some of the old putzes. I'd be curious to hear from big stick guys who've run all the, uh, all the different varieties. Even down to the old double Z 52 meter puts. The legend, the most legendary big boom, arguably of all time. Um, yeah, what do, you, what do you prefer? What do you find the, the strengths and weaknesses of each of them are for certain situations? I'd be really, uh, really curious to know. Like I said, I know the RZ well, 
The others I don't know from first-hand experience, I just know from being around them and uh, being a complete pump nerd and playing out scenarios in my head as to how I would operate uh, with each configuration. So let me know what you think. I know Dan, Dan will have some great input on this. He's run a couple of big boom ZRs. He's got some good experience there. So Dan, what do you think, Dan? Let me know. Yeah, so back to the, uh, the boom control tuning. I think, uh, I think I finally got her dialed in. And man, oh man, it is so much nicer. That last video I posted with this big pump, um, the 700 cubic meter ice arena pour, um, man, I was fighting this thing hard. Uh, it definitely makes for a more stressful day. Because this pump here always had been and still should be one of the smoothest booms in our fleet. Uh, and I think she's back to that stage now. It is a, uh, an absolute pleasure to operate right now. I usually set my controls a little bit on the slow side. I like them to be nice and forgiving. Um, I know there's guys that they like it a little quicker. They claim to run the pump on a rabbit all the time. I personally, anybody I've seen who actually does that uh, and what they do to the guy at the end of the hose when they're running it in a rabbit um, is kind of the reason why I don't. I've never seen anybody that's really smooth and precise that runs a thing in a rabbit the whole time. But uh, I'm sure there's somebody out there. I just haven't seen it myself. So anyhow, yeah, super happy with the controls on this thing now. It is, uh, it is dialed in. So I no longer dread having to take this thing out every now and again. About two thirds of the way done. And a nice little surprise. Just what you want to hear on about a 40 degree Celsius day with zero shade. When we're all done pouring the slab, They've uh, been kind enough to ask me to stretch out to that roof and they're gonna have buckets that I'm gonna fill and they're gonna bucket a little slab right on the top there rather than bringing them up from the bottom. They'll swing the pump over, pump into the buckets. I mean, I get it, it saves them a little bit of a, uh, a little bit of time around trip on the bucket. But uh, yeah, just what I'd love to do when it's 40 degrees out, super hot, pump sitting in the, or concrete sitting in the pump Dribbling, dribbling into buckets while it cakes the crap out of my hopper. Oh, good times, there's always something. See, if I had my little 28 meter, I wouldn't get stuck on these commercial jobs, you know? I just deal with residential guys that consistently order three meters short three times in a row. <laughs> there's always something. Oh man, give me some shade. That stuff that's been on the ground for about 45 minutes is already rock hard. So these guys, being on their game, they're taking a fresh load and they're just gonna freshen up that joint and consolidate it, which is the right thing to do rather than try and bring a big wide bay back, run out of concrete, and be another half hour before they get onto that and it's unsalvageable. So these guys are doing a good job. They're doing the right thing. See what he's doing here with the vibrator to fuse that new concrete, the fresh stuff the old stuff there that's getting a little bit hard. So vibrate that all together, consolidate it so you don't have a cold joint. Okay, so that stuff's been on the ground for 20 minutes. Rocket fuel. She is my destiny. Oh joy. I'm in my happy place. If I keep saying it, maybe it'll just become true. I'll convince myself. Yeah, ready mix there hiding behind the tree. That's the supplier for our other job. If you see the cranes off in the yonder there, behind that tree. Uh, that's where Jag and James are today doing the place and boom gig. We are uh, centralized in one one area today. Or at least a couple jobs pretty close together. Doesn't sound nearly as fancy or technical when I word it that way though. Here's a fun game. How far under that roof do you think I'm gonna reach? I think I'm gonna be 
three and three quarters boom sections to get to the edge. So I'll get that fifth section and the little makeup pipe there, the little eight foot makeup pipe at the end of the fourth. So the full fifth, one pipe on the fourth over the edge of that rail there on the roof. Place your bets, people. Place your bets. It's pretty tough to tell from here. But uh, yeah, that's what I'm gonna go with. All right, there it is. The last hurrah on the slab. Bang this one, stretch out, fiddle around over there. Suck the sponge back, wash out, fold up, go home. It's that easy, right? Oh, I only wish. has a lot of hyper extension on the main section but you can use it as long as your tip hose stays that side of the turret totally okay to do don't ever bring that tip hose back past the center line so that's bad news say this is quite the uh, facility lots of square footage all right here we are a little winded a bit of a hike anyhow I was you know what? I'm actually not far off I can't go to the edge because the the safety rope there but yeah I figured I'd get one pipe of that fourth section over the over the rail there oh yeah damn near bang on if we were to flatten this thing out oh good times this is it unfortunately the one on here we got to change the fitting out it doesn't mate up with the uh, the female end on the on the airline coming off the boom but man oh man I wish I had it right now all right so back to my uh, previous comments in a previous video about an oiler so here I am up here on my own nobody down at the trunk or the truck rather the pump and this concrete is just going off and they need to put retarder in it or do something but for me to get down there is like a seven minute ordeal and with the way this stuff's going i don't have time to be running back and forth man oh man what i would give to have a second pump operator down there right now keeping on top of this you see they're spinning it up again it's not the driver's fault it's like 90 degrees Fahrenheit out and we're sitting here in the sun doing a teaspoon at a time and the stuff's just it's just expired well, this is lovely hot mud two dead batteries because you know of course I'm the only guy up there I killed I burned through two of them so I gotta run down half an acre to get a fresh battery I love my job I love my job I love my job just going on a hike for a battery. Hi, hi, man. Whew. Well, slab is done. We're just working on our uh, last couple of buckets here. 
Oh, I can't wait to get out of here. It is hot, hot, hot. Get back to my cozy, non-air conditioned cab. All right, bucket, buddy. We're done. If you watch on YouTube, you watch Canadian Concrete Pumper? I'll put you out. You want to be on my YouTube video? You and I, okay. Canadian Concrete Pumper. Look it up on YouTube. I'll... I have to say Canadian Concrete Pumper? Oh, well, you don't have to say anything. You just hang out with me and I'll put you right now. Right now. Okay. We're on we're on YouTube right now. Oh. So next Saturday I'll put the video up and you'll be on it. Oh, nice. There you Cheers. go. <laughs> All right, so that's a wrap. About two hours of bucketing. Their bucket was caked. This slab is turned white. I'm almost scared to go down and see what my hopper's gonna look like. The slab's nice and finished. The concrete's turning white the same day it was poured. It usually means it's pretty warm out. <laughs> Anyhow, we'll go down. We'll check in when I'm sucking some sponges. We'll listen for the ocean, all that fun stuff. But uh, yeah, I am about spent here. Whoo, what a day. See what a messed up hopper looks like? Huh, something like this. I'm gonna recirculate this, this is crazy. We got it fixed up not too bad. It was just more sticky than set. But uh, yeah, it's on its way. This stuff is on its way. Suck this back. I'll give her a little, a little bit of Kung Pao Tazao. Even for this hot stuff, it doesn't take much. Just a something like, something like, a little tough to do here with one hand. That's plenty. One dead hopper. This Goodbye. stuff is so sticky and hot and cooked. I'm not gonna mess around. It's gonna go three sections straight up here to make sure whatever was left in that third section falls back down into the main. You can hear it coming back down. We're well below the crane still. This evening. So let all that fall back down. Sounds pretty good. Then we'll come back down here and we'll do the old classic A-frame suck back. Like I said, this stuff is so far gone. I'm not gonna mess around with any fancy Z fold, blah, 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 blah. We're just going tried and true A-frame today. One ball and lots of water and a second ball, but yeah. This is uh, this is not stuff to mess around with at this point. She has expired. Now, now when I bring this boom back down, I don't have any concrete falling into that tip elbow. About the worst thing you can do in terms of trying to pull your sponge back um, is to try and pull it back with a few handfuls of concrete sitting in that elbow. That's about your that's about the best way for you to plug up pulling a sponge back, get it stuck. The absolute best way is to have a bunch of handfuls of concrete in that elbow, then flood a bunch of water in there, and then pull the sponge. That's even worse. But yeah, you want that elbow. If anything falls in there, just pull it out by hand. So. All right, here goes the money shot. Full volume reverse. Full RPM. Here we go, camera in mouth time. A little hung up here the, the kathunk it'll go though when you get that kathunk it's it's having a hard time pulling it she's moving now and she's home but yeah she put up a fight though just because this mud is just so hot and sticky it is done so we'll fire our water up here I'm just gonna load a pile of water in front of this second sponge. Let's go from this side. 
Okay now, but it was yeah. It was definitely it was eventful. You did, you persevered. One less warrior life, right? Still way to look at it. <laughs> yeah, absolutely. I'm all good, man. All good. What was it? How many? Yeah, please. Yeah, the ocean. We got the ocean going too. Did we? we got sidetracked there. Oh yeah. A couple big strokes just to make sure. She's home. All right. That's a day. I am cooked. I am done. About 12 hours. I think we're in 12 hours and I'll be at 14 by the time I'm done. So anyhow, get your comments in. Want a swing model? I had way too much sun. I'm out of here. Like, share, subscribe. Times three, over and out. <laughs>